morning date. Welcome to another edition of Morning Date, when we get to meet with amazing figures from all walks of life. Well, today I have the absolute privilege of sitting down with Emeritus Professor in the English Department of Sogang University and Chair Professor at Tanguk University, Brother Anthony, also known as An Sanjae Gyosunim, a naturalized Korean citizen. Welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. <laughs> Could you say hi to our listeners? Mm -hmm. uh, could you say hi to our listeners out there today? Yeah. <laughs> it's wonderful to have you here in the studio. And, you know, I think I should probably begin with um, the poem that I read earlier on. <laughs> I'm going to have to ask you what you made of my translation of that, because I translated the English to Korean. And uh, well, it seemed, was it okay? Seemed, seemed to be really good. Oh, yes, okay. yes. Thank you very I much. It, I think it said what the English said. <laughs> I think it said it very well. Ah, 감사합니다. <laughs> 앞서서 제가 그 읽었던 poem 번역은 제가 했었는데요. 사실은 번역의 대가 특히 이제 시의 번역에 있어서 대가이신 선생님 앞에 있다 보니까 제가 참 많이 작아지는 느낌이 듭니다. 아, 물론 선생님께서는 이제 보통 음. 영한이 아니라 이제 한 영으로 번역을 많이 하시죠. It's actually really difficult to translate Korean poetry or Korean literature in general into English because of so much of the contextual uh, things that go are involved. Why did you choose to do this? I don't know. I suppose because I'm crazy, but uh, um, it's um, always important to translate into your own language, your sure. mother tongue. Right. Because that's the language you know. Mm. When I translate, I like to have somebody check right. whether I understood the Korean or not. Right. Because Korean is a very difficult language. Mm. When did you start translating Korean literature? Well, I came to Korea in 1980. And then by chance became professor at Sogang teaching Shakespeare and Chaucer. Mm -hmm. And so about 18, 1988, I said to another colleague, I said, well, I'm teaching English poetry. I would like to know something about Korean poetry. Ah, I see. And um, so she introduced me to the poet Ku Sang, ah. who she knew personally. And right. she said, oh, he's not too difficult. Yeah and he's Catholic, and so so that was how I started. Really? And then wow. one thing led to another. Mm, and here we are today, oh, of course. Yes. 1980년도에 김수환 추기경의 초청으로 선생님께서는 이제 한국에 오셨습니다. 그 앞서서 1969년 프랑스 떼제 공동체에서 어, 수사 서원 네, 계셨었고요. 그러고 나서 이제 말씀하신 대로 한 8년간의 기간 동안 뭐 한국말도 배우시고 문학에 관심도 이제 가지시면서 서강대학교에서 재직을 하신 이후부터 이제 본격적으로 번역일을 시작하셨습니다. Well, you have dozens of authors, books, um, volumes worth of translations under your belt, and pretty much every famous modern Korean poet uh, has had their work uh, translated by yourself, as I understand it. So, what is it about Korean poetry? that captivates the reader so much? I don't know if it really captivates the reader, but I hope so. It has to be its Korean-ness, mm. but it also has to be its simple humanity. Yes. Um, if it's too Korean because other people don't know what kimchi is or what <laughs> twin jang is. Right. Um, so it can't be too Korean. Uh -huh. But at the same time, it has to reflect the Korean experience of mm -hmm. life, which is not necessarily the same as, say, an English or American experience of life. Right. So in that sense, if you were to compare English poetry to Korean poetry, it's the cultural difference then? Well, it's also historical. You see, there's so mm. much English poetry. Anybody in England who's educated would know Chaucer and Milton and Shakespeare and Wordsworth and so. Mm. But in Korea, Korean poetry only really begins, well, just in the Japanese period and Sojongju a bit before 1940. And, but it doesn't have that long history. Right. Oh, lots of uh, comparisons of obviously could be made, but then in and of itself, Korean poetry is very unique. 
Well, last week we actually had uh, Mr. Darcy uh, Paquet on the show. Uh, he translated the movie Parasite from Korean to English, uh, and that movie won the Palm d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival. You know, sometimes if you look at the different types of translations, there's movie translations, literature translations, they also have their own difficulties, you know, the little qualms, you know, <laughs> you might have to go through. What would you say is the biggest challenge when translating Korean literature into English? Well, finding the right words. Mm, <laughs> and um, it's easier than translating subtitles of movies because we're not limited to length. Um, ah. or having to match also the tone of people's voices. Okay. And he's an expert. And you have to be able to do that very freely, creatively. Mm -hmm. Whereas I'm feeling strongly that I want to try to say in English what the Korean poet says in Korean, mm. as closely as possible, but yes. as poetically as possible. Right. Which I, th I think is some, in some ways even more challenging than uh, movie translations. But, but Maybe. That's, it depends but how much you it, like freedom. I'm exactly. not sure I like freedom. Ah, 그렇군요. 이제 영화 번역과 굳이 비교를 하자면 은 자막 번역은 그 말하는 속도라든지 그 말의 길이를 어느 정도 좀 맞춰줘야 되는 그런 어려움이 있습니다. 그래서 템포 이런 거를 좀 맞춰야 되는 그런 작업이 들어간다면 은시 번역, 문학 번역은 그런 말의 길이에는 제한이 없다 이런 말씀을 하셨어요. 그래서 내용 전달이 제일 중요하고 시의 경우에는 운율도 어느 정도를 좀 맞춰줘야 된다는 그런 어려움은 있다는 말씀이십니다. Well, of all of the things that you've translated, all the different types of uh, literature, which would you say was the most challenging? I, I mostly translate poetry, and yes. people say, oh, that's so difficult. And yeah, I, I say, well, no, be. no. Mm -hmm. The thing about poems is mostly they're short. <laughs> right. I, I have done novels, but novels go on and on and on for hundreds of pages. Mm. And um, I, I find myself getting bored. Ah, ah, she는 이제 짧아서 번역하기가 비교적 쉽다라는 uh, 선생님의 의견을 주셨고요. Well, over the past 40 years that you've been here, you've obviously seen the different reactions across the world with your translations of Korean work. How would you say the global audience has changed in terms of their reception? Uh, well. Poetry, like fiction in the West, in the English-speaking world, uh, they've now become much more global, if you like. Yeah. There's, there's this whole thing called world literature. Uh -huh. And um, there's a whole focus now in the last few years on the need for translation from many, many languages and from many cultures that previously were looked down on or rejected, ignored. Mm. And Korea is, of course, one of those sure. areas. You didn't expect poetry from Korea. You expected mash. And, <laughs> mash. And bad, I remember that. Bad news. <laughs> but... Uh, mm. So that the the discovery of a need in England and the States or Australia for <coughs> for translations from very uh, very unknown languages mm. and cultures is a new phenomenon right. and it's an expanding one because in England and um, the States until now the total percentage of translated books, not just literature, translated mm. books each year was, what, 3% of those published? Korean to English? No, from just, foreign languages. Oh, foreign languages. Oh, my goodness. Because so many people are writing in English. Right. They don't need, or mm. they didn't need, they didn't mm. feel the need to publish translations into English, right, right. which are often slightly dodgy because they're so. not really written for the English audience mm. in the way that mm. an English or an American writer is writing in English. Right. But do you personally feel there is an increased demand for that There's now? much more now. Much, much more, much now. more now. You mm. have, where you have, thanks partly to the internet and you have online blogs and, yeah. um, and World Literature Today magazine and Words Without Borders and Modern Poetry in Translation, sure. and all sorts of forum mm. where you find people 
sending in translations from I say many many different languages. 네. 지난 40년 동안 안선재 교수님께서 이제 한국에 계시면서 처음보다 지금은 이제 현저하게 그런 한국 번역물을 원하는 글로벌 오디언스가 늘었다고 생각하신다고 말씀을 해 주셨습니다. 그건 어떻게 보면 국제적인 추세도 있고요. 한국뿐만 아니라 전 세계적으로 그 전에는 알려지지 않았던 나라의 그런 번역물, 특히 시를 이제 더 많이 찾고 있는 그런 추세도 있고, 어, 그 다음에 또 이제 어떻게 보면 한국의 인기도 한 몫을 하는 것 같아요. Do you think BTS is helping to uh, get people to be more interested in Korean literature? Yeah, as I say, then people also now there's more, especially fiction, fiction more than poetry. People mm. are reading more Korean fiction because mm. they're discovering young Korean writers whose work is much more in tune with a, a global youthful readership, right. um, thrillers, psychological mm. mysteries, um, and strange stuff that sure. modern youth seems to like. Whereas uh -huh. Korean poetry doesn't mostly have anything so quite so exotic. It's more deeply rooted in I say in Korean experience. 음, 뭐 전혀 무관하다라고 볼 수는 없겠지만 그래도 이제 한류의 영향으로 인해서 국제 오디언스가 지금까지 더 많이 좋아하는 것은 소설이라든지 이런 쪽에 좀 대중문화적인 그런 요소들을 더 많이 찾기는 하지만 그래도 어, 한국의 시를 찾는 해외의 많은 어, 그런 고객이라든지 뭐 사람들이 많이 늘었다라는 말씀이 어, 인, 굉장히 인상적이네요. 40년 동안 이제 지내시면서 정말 많은 거를 겪고 에피소드도 참 많으셨을 것 같습니다. We'll continue our story, our conversation with Emeritus Professor in the English Department of Sogang University and award-winning literary translator extraordinaire, An Sanjay Kyusunim. We'll be right back after a song. This is Shania Twain, That Don't Impress Me Much. We're back with Morning Date, and today I have An Sanjay Gyosunim with me in the studio, taking us on a trip around literary translation. 네, 교수님은요 현재 서강대 명예교수이자 한국대 석자 교수로 재직 중이시고요. 또몇해 전에는 영국의 그 훈장인 MBE도 받으셨습니다. 우리나라에서는 한국 문학상 번역상 또 대산 문학상 번역상 등을 수상하신 경력도 있으십니다. You've lived here, as I said, for many years. Let's go back to the beginning. Um, in 1980, you arrived. And what was it that captivated you, made you stay? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, take you us know, back to 1980, or you know, <clears throat> around that time. Yeah, well, you see, we were. In, I, I belong to a community based in France called yes. Community of Taizé. Mm -hmm. And we were invited by Cardinal Kim, the Archbishop here, Kim uh, to yeah. come and be with the young people. This, of course, a very difficult time. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we came, not knowing really what, what we would do, and soon realized the first thing was we had to learn Korean. Nobody mm -hmm. was speaking English or French. And so uh, we started learning Korean. And then once you've learned Korean, there's no other country in the world where you can use it. Right. <laughs> so that's one reason for staying. And <laughs> then after a few years, somehow by chance, I became this um, professor at Sokang University teaching English literature, mm -hmm. which was not something I had expected ever to do, but ah. I found myself enjoying it. And then getting deeper into Korean life and right. culture and food. Mm -hmm. and, um, do you have a favorite food, Korean food? Oh, I like everything. Do you? <laughs> yeah, yesterday evening it was Hong O Chim. Oh my goodness. Which a lot of people you can't don't. get more Korean than that. No, well, quite. No, <laughs> 네, 1980년에 어, 프랑스 대제 공동체 수사로서 이제 김수환 추기경의 초청으로 한국에 처음 오셨습니다. 그러면서 이제 우리 말을 배우시고 우리 문화를 좀 배우시면서 사실 그 앞서서 영국에서 옥스퍼드 대학교에서 선생님이 중세 서양 문학 박사 학위까지 받으신 바가 있었기 때문에 그런 전공을 살려서 결국은 이제 영문학을 가르치시고 이렇게 번역을 하게 되신 것 같습니다. Um, what have been some of the biggest rewards, would you say, throughout your teaching career? Uh, well, I, I was very lucky, of course, uh, having this job in Sogang. The, the students at Sogang 
uh, were uh, still are extremely talented, but sure. also humanly speaking, very helpful, encouraging, mm. interested, and uh, right through, I was able to introduce them or help introduce them mm. to English, especially British literature, and especially older stuff, well, even Chaucer and history of literature and Shakespeare and nice. John Donne and. And sometimes going up as far as Jane, Jane Austen, not wow. often. Mm -hmm. But um, it's been a very rewarding experience to be with the young people like that. Right. When it comes to translating Korean words, I mean, as you said, you don't have a limitation when it comes to the length of what you're translating. And you do have a bit of freedom. But still, there are certain words that are just, you know, you can't translate them at all in English. And one example I can think of, uh, something I did when, when I was an undergrad, actually, was I, I translated Dime Chimmuk by Han yong -un, and I just had trouble with Nim, <laughs> the first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How do you translate that? So I, I personally ended up just writing Nim and then an anecdote of what that meant. How do you go about words like that? Yeah, well, you don't. I mean, <laughs> uh, you just have to accept that. Right. Um, it doesn't work. Um, there yeah. isn't an, uh, there isn't a corresponding word, mm. uh, and um, whatever it is, there are all sorts of things like that. Um, yeah. People people think that you can do where any word can be word for word translated, and it's not so, mm. because um, we don't say the same thing at the same time in the same way. And of course, then if that's one reason why I don't translate novels, ah. because in novels people speak in dialect or with idioms, and the idioms work and they're funny or they're violent or whatever they are in Korean, mm. but we don't have that idiom in English or anything like yes. it. Yes. Have you ever been in a situation where you thought, there's no way to translate this. Uh, all the time. Okay, <laughs> the how, time. and how do you... There's no way you can translate anything <laughs> if you expect it to say the same thing. Ah, okay. It has to say something vaguely similar, mm. as similar as possible. Right. Um, but in addition, of course, like uh, the great thing in Korean that we don't have anywhere else except mm. in Japanese is chande mal pan mal. Yes. And um, that, especially again in fiction, that plays a huge role sometimes. And you can't do it. Mm. It doesn't exist. Right. There's no equivalent at all. How, how do you Then, well, you have to You have to add a little remark. Ah, he spoke right. rudely or ah. patronizingly ah. or arrogantly. Uh -huh. You somehow have to explain mm. by a little word like that. But you can't do anything Aha. directly. 맞아요. 시를 번역하다 보면은 정말 많은 경우 직역이 불가능한 그런 어, 글들을 보게 된다고 합니다. 그래서 원문을 그대로 번역하는 것이 불가능한 경우가 워낙 많기 때문에 부연 설명으로 반말이나 존댓말 같은 경우는 이런 느낌의 말이다라고 이제 영어로 설명을 한다든지 아니면은 어떤 단어가 번역하기 힘들 때는 마찬가지로 그럼 그대로 놔두고 그 다음에 옆에 부연 설명. 이것은 이런 의미의 이런 느낌의 말이다 라는 그 설명을 덧붙이신다고 설명해 주셨습니다. Well, this is all very fascinating, you know. Um, and because I did a little bit of uh, translating it during my undergrad studies, this is more so personally for me, but I'm sure a lot of our listeners out there are vastly interested in, you know, Korean literature and translation. If you're translating a novel that is set in a hanok, uh -huh. in a Korean house, yes. every part of that Korean house has a Korean name and That's no right. English equivalent. Right. Starting with the Tunmaru and the Maru mm. and the uh, Sarangche, Sarangche yeah. the Anche. Right. None of this has any equivalent. So you just leave it as is and then you add an explanation? I don't, I don't, that's why I it don't depends. do depends. Oh, you don't do novels. You don't do novels. There you go. <laughs> well, you have to explain it somehow. It depends what the role is, you see, how important it is to know exactly what. You know, Sarangche is the men's quarters. <laughs> 아, 그러네요. 그렇게 설명을 해야 되는 부분이 많아서 소설은 어떻게 보면 이제 부연 설명이 너무 길어지니까 소설을 번역한 적은 있지만 가급적이면 시만 번역을 하신다. <웃음> 이런 설명을 해 주셨습니다. Okay, well let's take another song break. And when we come back, we'll continue to talk with Anson 교수님. This is Spice Girls to Become One. 
We're back with Morning Date, and today I have Emeritus Professor in the English Department of Sogang University, An Sanjae Kyosunim, with me in the studio. Now, you've done so many translations in the past. How many, if you could possibly predict, um, would you like to continue to translate in the future? Yeah, well, I published 45 volumes of poetry, um, and I have another 10 or so poetry or fiction waiting to find publishers. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm still going on for the moment, uh, sure. translating. What I'm especially translating now is the poetry of Pak Noor Hare, mm. who was very famous, of course, especially in the 80s and 90s, yes. and as prisoner of conscience and everything. Uh -huh. So I'm working on that, and then we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Okay. I'm getting old, I'm getting old. <laughs> it's not an easy question. Well, if you could um, maybe brag about Korean as a language, uh, why does the world need to learn it? <laughs> because it's so difficult. That's a reason to learn it. <laughs> well, of course, everybody now wants to learn it so they can sing K-pop. Mm, that's true. And that's not really quite my thing. <laughs> right. but, uh, again, I'm my age, but um, Korean language is very special. Everything is the opposite of what it would be in English. When ah. we translate, every phrase is at the other end right. of the sentence. Right, in terms of the order the of order how you of say things. The order of words yeah. and phrases. Yes. It's, it's a very different language. Mm. Does that change your perspective of just thinking about things or approaching things? The way, you know, just because this language makes you think in the opposite way of what you were brought up to. Yeah, well, think. I don't think in Korean. Ah, I think, you I think, I, you know, my Korean is, I'm not bilingual. There are a lot of people, I mean, you are bilingual, but I'm not. Okay. And uh, so it's different. But ah. um, they always say, when you speak a foreign language, you are different. That's very true. Whatever yes. the language, oh, and however well more. you speak it. Mm. But especially if you are used to speaking, you have a developed personality. Yes. So people look at me and say, you're so Korean. Cornish. I'm <laughs> 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 그 문화를 이제 흡수하는 것이 자동적으로 같이 병행이 되기 때문에 어, 안선재 교수님께서는 영어를 이제 모국어로 쓰시지만 많은 사람들이 어, 굉장히 한국적이다 라는 말씀을 하신다고 합니다. Um, well, of course, you know, a lot of people look up to you as an educator. What tips would you like to give to students dreaming of becoming translators? Well, my tip is you become a translator into your own language. Right. A lot of people want, as Koreans, they mm. feel they want to translate Korean literature into English. But that's hor you know, right? That's yes, horribly difficult. It's a foreign language. Mm. You don't have the mastery, whereas if you are using your own native language, right. you, you can find the depth and the the way of saying it and mm. the poetic way of saying right. it. So don't think you want to become an English translator unless you really are bilingual from a long right. way back. 네, 번역을 할때 이제 번역을 하는 원어가 있고요. 그 다음에는 그것이 번역이 되는 target language가 있을 텐데 번역이 되는 언어가 본인의 모국어 수준이어야 된다라는 말씀이십니다. 그러니까 영어 간의 모국어다 라고 하면은 한영 번역 얼마든지 좋다. 그런데 한국어 우리말이 모국어다 라고 하면은 한영 번역보다는 영한 번역을 하는 것이 훨씬 좋다 라는 말씀이신 것 같습니다. I think that's actually a great tip for people approaching translation because as you said, people don't have that concept and sometimes they think, you know, I speak a little English, I speak very good Korean, I think I can translate into English, but that's just not the case. All right, very interesting. Well, as a professor, you must project a certain image to your students as well. How would you like to be remembered by uh, your students? Or how are you remembered by your past students? Do they, you know, um, come and tell you that you, you, were, you were this to me, you meant this to me? I know one of our staff members is actually one of your former students. Yeah, well, of course, you will have to ask them. I'm not <laughs> sure, but... No, no. What he I has like, said many fabulous things. Yeah, what I like is when they say, I remember what you told me about that Shakespeare line or that Shakespeare play or that 
poem, it it made sense mm. and it helped me discover the beauty of it or the meaning of it. Because what you want in literature is not giving people A, B, C, D, F, mm. but helping them to discover the beauty and the meaning of life mm -hmm. through literature. And that's what literature is about, yes. beauty and meaning. Right. And you have to internalize that and discover it as also your own way of living. Ah, wow. So it's not a, it's not a, a qualification for a job. Mm. But it's about discovering life sure, and sure. In, in these words or through those words. 아, 지금까지는 교수님이 이제 들었던 얘기들 중에서 가장 인상적이고 또 앞으로도 제일 많이 듣고 싶은 얘기는 학생들이 어, 선생님의 설명으로 인해서 제가 이런 감정을 갖게 됐습니다. 이런 느낌을 갖게 됐습니다. 깨달음을 얻었습니다. 라는 것이 굉장히 의미가 있다. 그러니까 단순하게 뭐 초서가 이런 얘기를 했다는 것을 배웠습니다. 이게 아니고요. 어, 쉐익스피어의 뭐 뭐뭐뭐를 배워서 좋습니다. 이게 아니라 그것을 통해서 내가 내 인생을 돌아보게 됐다. 이런 느낌을 받았다. 내 인생을 내가 뭐 바꾸게 됐다라든지 그런 좀더 깊은 고차원적인 깨달음을 얻었을 때 어, 어떤 스승으로서 교수님으로서 큰 보람을 느끼신다라는 말씀인 것 같습니다. I think that's going to be a great sort of barometer, if you will, for people to um, think about when they teach their future students as well. Well, thank you so much for your time this morning. One word? Yes, sure. Um, Chun Sang Byung, yes. his most famous poem, uh -huh. Gui Chun, yeah. the end of Gui Chun, at the end of my outing to this beautiful world, I'll go back and say that was beautiful. Oh. So that's what I want. Thank you so much. I love that. 네, 마무리로 또 이렇게 귀천의 마지막 소절 번역까지 해주셨습니다. 네, 오늘은요 안선재 교수님 또 수사이시기도 하죠. 이렇게 모닝 데이트에서 모셔봤습니다. 많은 얘기를 나누면서 저 역시 좀 많은 느낌과 울림이 좀 있는 시간이었어요. 정말 더욱 더 감사하다는 말씀을 드리고 싶습니다. All right, well, that's it for our morning date today. We're going to end things with a song. I'll be back in just a short while. This is Puff Daddy, I'll Be Missing You.